Dear St. Andrew's members and friends, one of the essential tools that we definitely need for living through this challenging time of pandemic and social protest is joy. For it is joy that lightens our burdens and gives us the strength to keep going when times are hard. In the past 18 weeks of shutdown and social distancing to slow the spread of the novel coronavirus certainly qualifies this as hard times. And it is hard too that there is no clear end in sight. We are waiting to see what will happen with the virus. Well, today's text from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 14 is one that I preached on at the very beginning of the pandemic, focusing then on how we can let go of our anxieties and receive God's peace that passes understanding. But this is a rich text, and there's so much in it. Today, I'm going to focus on joy. I invite you now to listen carefully for God's word to you from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 14. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through the one who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share in my distress. For the word of God here in scripture, for the word of God all around us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Well, in today's reading, the Apostle Paul begins in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And to make sure we get how important joy is, he says, again, I will say, rejoice. With this emphasis on joy and rejoicing, Paul is standing firmly in the tradition of both his rabbinic training in the Hebrew scriptures and in the teachings of Jesus. The command that is repeated most often in the Bible is rejoice. To rejoice means not only to have joy, but to be joyful. It means to feel exceeding gladness and to express that joy. We are commanded to do it not for God's sake, but for our own sake. Joy is more than positive thinking or pumping oneself up with compliments and encouragement. Joy has its root in God's own nature. To rejoice is to recognize that we have a reason to be encouraged. God is on our side and has heartily and joyfully embraced us as God's own. The deepest reason for rejoicing is the knowledge that God is on our side, that God is with us through good times and difficult times. Let your gentleness be known to all, for God is near, says the apostle in verse 5. That joy is God's gift to humankind. 
Joy is food for the soul. Joy lifts up the human spirit. Joy gives us strength for living. Jean Ingelow wisely writes, Take joy home and make a place in thy great heart for her and give her time to grow and cherish her. Then she will come often and sing to thee. Sing even in times of sorrow and hardship and loss. Yes, joy has an important place in our lives even when we face the hard truth of suffering. And indeed, we see much suffering around us and suffering among us too. None of us escape some suffering in life. All of us can experience some joy. Frederick Buechner says that the world is full of suffering indeed, and to turn our backs on it is to work a terrible unkindness, maybe almost more on ourselves than on the world. But indeed, life is also to be enjoyed. I suggest that may even be the whole point of it. I more than suspect that that is why the sons of God and the daughters of God shouted for joy when God first brought creation into being. Ennis Lynn says that for her, joy appears now in little things. The big themes remain tragic. But a leaf fluttered in through a window this morning as if supported by the rays of the sun. A bird settled on the fire escape. Joy was in the taste of the coffee. Joy accompanied me as I walked to the press. The secret of joy, she says, is in the mastery of pain. A human life inevitably contains suffering and joy. Joy and pain. Joy and grief. The poet Mary Oliver writes, We shake with joy, we shake with grief. What a time they have, these two housed as they are in the same body. So I encourage you to cherish the special moments and to rejoice and give thanks. Live each day, too, looking for all things as arrows of joy shot from the bow of your loving Creator. As Ernesto Cardinal put it, Picasso was right when he said that we do not know what a tree or a window really is. All things are very mysterious and strange, like Picasso's paintings. And we overlook their estrangement and their mystery only because we are so used to them. Only dimly do we understand the nature of things. What are things? They are God's love become things. God also communicates with us by way of all things. They are messages of love. When I read a book, God is speaking to me through this book. I raise my eyes to look at the countryside. God created it for me to see. The picture I look at today was inspired by God in the painter for me to see. Everything I enjoy was lovingly given by God for me to enjoy. And even my pain is God's loving gift. May God give us such eyes of faith to see God's love in all things and rejoice. Moments of joy come to us again and again in the midst of our life's journey, which, yes, is full of challenges and times of sorrow, even in the midst of this pandemic that we are in, with its challenges, hardships, uncertainties, and losses. There is joy. Blessed moments of wow come to connect us to life and to God, the source of all life. 
But friends, we need to be open and attentive or we risk missing the wow moments. That sunrise is only there for a few minutes. You have to be there, looking with eyes open and attentive to see it and drink in its beauty. And then it is gone. And sun is there for a new day. The same is true with spring blossoms on the trees. They last longer, but in mere days, often they are gone. My grandson, Callan, took his first steps. And what a joyous thing that was for us to behold. The first toddling steps that a baby takes. So proud of his accomplishment. I was glad to be there to see and experience that moment, which is deeply meaningful and will not come again. The thing is that joy can only be experienced when we are open to the present moment, to the now. We can and should remember past joys, but that is gratitude or thanksgiving. We can anticipate joys, but that is hope. But joy requires being present in the moment, this present moment, this moment before God, with God, in God, surrounded by life, immersed in life. To experience joy, you have to settle yourself into the present moment, the now of life. When we are longing for a past that is gone, we make it hard to experience joy in the present moment. Or when we struggle to control our future, to make things turn out the way we want them to be, we can also lose touch with our present reality, with the eternal now which is the only place where we can experience God's joy now. Wow, now. As Martin Buber, the Jewish philosopher, knew the beating heart of the universe is holy joy. So if we are not experiencing this joy, then we are disconnected from what is ultimately real. But when we open ourselves up, to experience the beauty of God and God's creation, to respond with joy, then we can feel the very pulse of the universe, the beating heart of God's love. Every experience of joy in this life is a taste of heaven. Every experience of joy in this life is a hint of an ultimate joy that God has prepared for us for this life and the life to come. Mary Oliver gives an example in a poem. She's my favorite poet. From this river, when I was a child, I used to drink. But when I came back, I found that the body of the river was dying. Did it speak? Yes, it sang out the old songs, but faintly. What will you do? I will grieve, of course, but that's nothing. What precisely will you grieve for? For the river? For myself? My lost joyfulness? For the children who will not know what a river can be? A friend? a companion, a hint of heaven. Isn't this somewhat overplayed? I said it can be a friend, a companion, a hint of heaven. These hints of heaven evoke joy. And with the eyes of faith, we can see reasons to rejoice everywhere and always. The poet David White says that inside everyone is a great shout of joy waiting to be born. May it be born in you today 
and in the days to come again and again. So with the apostle, rejoice. Again, I will say, rejoice. Amen. Our prayer for this time of COVID-19 comes from the Reverend Dr. Manhong Melissa Lin of the Chinese Christian Council. Please join me in prayer. When human life is disturbed, disrupted, and threatened by the novel coronavirus, we pray to you, God of life, grant us the compassion, humility, and self-discipline to value, care about, and protect each life. We pray to you, God of mercy, for all who have suffered directly and indirectly during this global pandemic, may you sustain, console, and heal them. We pray to you, God of grace, for all good efforts to rescue life and to maintain people's health. May you strengthen, guide, and protect all who have committed to fight against this disease. We pray to you, God of righteousness, for justice to prevail. May you lead us to combat racism, discrimination, stigmatization, and xenophobia with courage in the midst of this health crisis. We pray to you, God of love, for an early end of the transmission of COVID-19 that is harming all, and for life, health, and peace for all. Through your mercy, grace, and loving care, and through human solidarity, integrity, and mutual support, we pray in the name of Christ, who is our joy. Amen.